In this video, you will learn how to use these solubility rules on the star chemistry reference materials to predict whether an ionic compound will dissolve in water. When ionic compounds dissolve in water, the water, because it's polar and has partial positive hydrogens and partial negative oxygens, they're attracted to the ions in the ionic compound and they surround each ion and sort of pull them apart from each other so that the positives are floating around separately from the negatives. So a solution would end up looking like this, where the copper ions are over here and the sulfate ions are over here, but they're surrounded by water, so they're all still in the same space. That's what we call um, aqueous, is when water is the solvent and has dissolved an ionic compound. But not all ionic compounds will dissolve in water that way. This is calcium carbonate, um, also known as limestone. And if you put it in water, you can see it's very cloudy. It hasn't dissolved. It's sort of made what we call a suspension, and if we let it sit long enough, all of that white calcium carbonate will just settle to the bottom. But this is an ionic compound, so why doesn't it dissolve in water? We aren't necessarily going to get into the why, but we're going to get into the how you can tell whether it will or will not. This chart shows you the solubility of ionic compounds in water. It's divided into two sections. So above this line right here are the compounds that are typically soluble in water meaning if we put a compound that has one of these ions in water, it will probably dissolve. However, there are exceptions. Anytime there's a rule in chemistry, there is probably an exception. So these are the ones that if this is the cation bonded to this anion, then they will not dissolve in water. Since these are soluble, then when we mix these in water, we end up getting an aqueous solution. So if we have nitrate, bonded to anything because there are no exceptions. If we put it in water, we will get an aqueous solution. If we put a bromide compound into water, we will probably get an aqueous solution unless the cation is silver, lead 2, or this mercury ion. So when we say these are exceptions, that means we put them in water and they would stay solid. So these are aqueous, these would dissolve unless it's one of these exceptions over here. Below the line are the insoluble compounds. Insoluble means not soluble. So more than likely, if it's got the carbonate anion, when you put it in water, it's going to stay solid. The exceptions are if you have the ammonium cation or any of the alkali metal cations. So the alkali metals are those first column of the periodic table. So if we've got sodium, lithium, any of these cations bonded to these anions, they will dissolve, and so we would get a Q for these over here. So if we look back at the examples from the beginning, copper sulfate we saw did dissolve. So if we look them up on the rules, we have sulfate right here in the aqueous section, meaning more than likely if it's got sulfate, it will dissolve. We just have to make sure that our cation, this first, this metal right here, is not one of the exceptions. And I noticed that just strontium, barium, lead 2, and this mercury ion are the only sulfates that would give me a solid and not dissolve. Okay, if we look at our other example, which was the calcium carbonate, I have to look it up by carbonate, right? Notice that calcium is not anywhere on this list, so I look it up by the carbonate. It's down here in the insoluble section, meaning more than likely it's not going to dissolve. It's just going to stay solid. Just look over here to make sure. Well, calcium's not an alkali metal. It's an alkaline earth, which is the second column, which is why this one stayed solid and did not dissolve. So let's look at another one. Let's look at PBI2, lead. This is Roman numeral 2, iodide. So we see lead is not over here. Most of the time we have to look it up by the anion. These are all negative. The only exception, this is the only cation that we would look up. So we look it up by iodide. Here's iodide. It's in the AQ section. So more than likely this is going to be AQ. But when we look at the exceptions, we see that lead 2, PB2, is one of the exceptions. And if you were to put this um, in water, it would be this yellow thing that does not dissolve. This is actually on the cover of your chemistry textbook. So PBI2 would stay solid and it would not dissolve. 
Okay, and then let's look at one last example here. If we have K2CRO4, we're going to look it up by the CRO4. So we looked on our list, and here's CRO4, here's chromate right here. And we notice it's in the S section, but we look at this picture and we say, wait, I can see right through that. That's not cloudy. That looks like the thing has dissolved. So we check the exceptions. Well, our cation is K, is potassium, which is an alkali metal. So this is an AQ right here because potassium chromate is an exception to the solubility rules.